Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Before I start off this video, I just wanna say a quick, like honest disclaimer. YouTube is no joke. You know when you're excited to start something new, like a new venture or a new project, and you're like, it'll be easy, I'll just do it this way and that way, and I'll make time for it. And I have a, just a little bit of time, just nothing on my schedule. But honestly, it's been such a challenge and such a new experience. I'm learning so much with every video I make and I post, whether it's on YouTube or on TikTok, I find so many mistakes in so many of my videos and I learn from them. Okay, so a very quick introduction. I've been having so much fun creating skincare content for you guys, whether it's about patch testing, SPF, uh, what's the best makeup remover out there. It's just super fun to have that freedom. But at the same time, I'm starting to like read up on people's comments and what people are asking for me in my videos. And I noticed that a lot of people are asking questions that are related to really basic stuff. How often do you apply sunscreen? What's the best moisturizer for me? How can I cleanse properly and ensure that I've removed all the gunk off my face at the end of the day? Which honestly is great for me because one, it gives me an opportunity to engage with you guys and that's super cool and super fun whenever I do that. And second, I get to actually respond to your concerns and see what you guys want. A lot of people are asking about very basic stuff which I know can be very confusing because I know when I started doing skincare myself, I had no idea that you only needed really three things. I had no idea what type of moisturizer to get or what type of sunscreen is the best. Should I get SPF 30, 50, 100? Is that expensive cleanser really worth it? And of course, so much time and effort that I put into so much trial and error. It's ridiculous how many products that I purchase and then come to realize that I really don't need this. So that's why I decided to make the series called Skincare Made Simple. It's basically a series where I tackle specific skincare topics, focusing on the basic stuff, like cleansing, moisturizing, chemical exfoliation, even the topics that are not so basic that you don't really need to incorporate into your routine. In this series, you're gonna find videos that are dedicated to this certain topic. So without further ado, let's start our very first topic of the series. is there to do you just wash your face rinse it off and then you're done just to play devil's advocate here let's pretend we're in the kindergarten of skincare and take it a step by step and figure out and see if we can learn more so the first step is what is a cleanser and why do you need it basically the function of a cleanser is in the name it cleanses your face of any dirt or sebum whether it's stuff you get on your face from the environment if you're super oily type skin and you just have a lot of sebum production on your face your cleanser is basically working to remove all of that and basically leaving your skin with a new and clean surface for it to receive any next products that you're gonna apply to your face. But keep in mind, not all cleansers were born equally. You have different types of cleansers that serve different types of purposes. So let's go by the different types of cleansers and what type of target audience or function they would be appropriate for. A good example to start this off is a gel cleanser. Gel cleansers are known to be for oily skin types. These types of cleansers usually carry in the ingredient list certain surfactants that are way more suitable for your skin type. And sometimes you can prove or disprove that by how tight your skin feels after you wash. For oily skin types, when they use this type of cleanser, their faces should feel very normal, nothing too fancy, right? But if you're a dry skin type and you use a gel cleanser that's specifically targeted towards oily skin types and you notice your face is tight, that sort of gives you the idea that the formula and the ingredient list inside this product isn't really suitable for your skin type. If you're on the dry side, Look for cleansers that have a more creamier texture. Cleansers that have hydrating ingredients like glycerin, sodium hyaluronate, panthenol. These are just a few examples of some ingredients that can be super beneficial for this type of cleanser if you're a dry skin type. Because although you're getting the function of the surfactants inside the formula, these soothing and hydrating ingredients will ensure that your skin barrier doesn't get disrupted and you're not left with that tight sensation in your face like it's about to crack. And usually that is what makes these certain products suitable for dry skin types because of the balance between the surfecting agents and the soothing and hydrating components in them as well. Now, is it always that simple? Anything that's gel-like you do for oily skin and anything that's on the creamier side you take it for dry skin? Not necessarily. There are examples of gel type cleansers that are suitable for all skin types. Again, this goes down to the ingredient list and the formula. A really cool example of a gel type cleanser that works for all skin types, whether you're dry, oily, combination, normal, is the Crave Beauty Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. So many people have been raving about this product. In almost everywhere I look it up, dry skin people are complimenting it, oily skin folks are complimenting it. So that's just an example how one type of cleanser doesn't just have to be exclusively for oily skin. 
Even hydrating cleansers can work so well for oily skin types. This applies if you're someone that's over drying your face. Either you're over cleansing, you're not moisturizing enough, you'll notice that your skin becomes even oilier to compensate for the lack of moisture that you're applying. So your skin sort of goes into rescue mode and the amount of sebum that your face produces simply increases. Another quick example of a cleanser that can work for all skin types is anything that's gentle. Another thing that you should take into consideration when choosing a cleanser is the current status of your skin. In very short terms, sensitivity. If you've been using retinoids or chemical exfoliants in the past few weeks, be very wary of cleansers that have a lot of fragrance in them, essential oil, because on normal skin alone, that could have so many problems of irritation. When you apply that on your skin that's already sensitive, that could cause a lot of issues that you just really don't want to deal with. And speaking of actives, you can definitely buy a cleanser that has actives in them. A lot of cleansers that are very famous in the skincare community have things like salicylic acid, vitamin C, and these all of course target different concerns. And personally, I think these types of cleansers are fine to use as long as you make sure that you're not incorporating too many actives into your skincare routine. Another type of cleanser that's super cool and super beneficial, especially if you're someone that wears a lot of makeup, is oil cleansers. It doesn't matter what type of skin you have, the purpose of using this type of cleanser is because you want to get off all the makeup off your face first. Basically, if you're using an oil cleanser, you're following the double cleanse method, which is you going in with an oil-based cleanser to disperse makeup, lipstick, mascara, eyeshadow, and then you go in with a water-based cleanser to remove the oil from your face that's carrying all that makeup. This is also great for removing sunscreen. Some sunscreens can be very difficult to wash off, and your regular cleanser that you're using might not be efficient enough to remove your sunscreen. A really cool example of an oil cleanser that is very popular in the skincare community is the Calendula Complete Cleansing Oil by iUnique. And another benefit when using oil cleansers is the hydrating factor that you're getting from it. So not only are you getting a super effective cleansing experience, you're also doing it without stripping your face too much. A key factor in the formula of these cleansers is the oil itself, which can differ from calendula oil, sunflower seed oil, sweet almond oil, all oils that are super good for your skin, now, one final thing I want to talk about is how often should you be cleansing? Okay, so let me put it this way. Personally, for me, if I had to choose one time a day where I had to cleanse my face, it would be at night, right before I go to bed. The best time during the day for you to cleanse your face, we all have super busy lifestyles. Whether you're going to school, work, you're going to the gym, you have to head up the supermarket, you have a doctor's appointment right after your work. During all of these things that you're doing during the day, there's so much sebum buildup and a lot of the free radicals in the environment that you're exposed to as you're going from your work to your classes or to the gym. At the end of the day, the best thing you can do is wash all of that dirt off. And that's not the only reason you should be cleansing at night right before bed. But is that the only time you should be cleansing? Absolutely not. I hate that I have to keep saying this, but it really does depend on your skin type and on your lifestyle. Let me put it this way. You get up in the morning ready to start your day, whether it's work, school, chores around the house. It's totally okay to start your day with a very gentle cleanser, nothing fancy schmancy, unless you applied something that's really thick and that you can still feel the residue of on your face. A gentle daily, very basic cleanser is all you need. Now let's say right after that, you're gonna go grocery shopping or you're gonna hang out with some friends or you're gonna go work out at the gym. If you don't feel that your skin is greasy or dehydrated, or you just take a very simple and quick look at your skin and you see that it's fine, you don't need to like really touch it up, so to say, then there's really no need. But if you're gonna do something that involves a lot of sweating, like working out, I personally would recommend cleansing again, either before or after, especially if you have sunscreen on, because when that gets mixed up with your sweat, that potentially could clog your pores and cause you things like acne. It's all up to you and what you deem fit for your skin. So be wary of that. Hey, thank you guys for watching. I'm so excited to start giving people what they want. It's super fun doing this. It's super fun doing this for you guys, with you guys. And this is gonna be a video for a series that's first of many. Thank you so much, guys. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. I love you all. Thanks. Bye.